thank you very much, you and you wider, for inviting me to this event. Um, a couple of um, caveats before I start. First of all, this is work in progress. Um, so um, s some of the data here uh, has yet to be verified and checked, but I think it gives a, 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 an idea of um, the direction <clears throat> in which we're going. Um, the second uh, caveat, if you will, is that it's got a rather grandiose title as of enhancing the quality of income data in surveys for microsimulation models in Africa. But in fact, um, w the project is actually looking specifically at Tanzania and Zambia um, with um, some additional information from South Africa. So it's a, an overambitious title that I've given it. And due to time constraints, I'm actually going to focus mainly on Tanzania um, with a little bit of South Africa um, at the end. I think it's become quite apparent um, during the course of the other presentations that actually the quality of income data is really important in tax benefit micro simulations, clearly and evidently um, where um, uh, for taxes are concerned, um, particularly direct taxes, income information, um, it, it, uh, quality income information is absolutely essential, but also where it comes to means-tested benefits, if they're tested on income, then clearly the quality of income data is also important. However, income data in many uh, surveys in, 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 in sub-Saharan Africa, um, whilst collected, isn't put an, to the test that, for example, consumption data is, is, is put to, because con consumption data is regularly used uh, to estimate poverty and inequality um, in, in, in most uh, low and middle income countries. So the income data doesn't get tested in the way it does in maybe developed countries or, um, as, 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 as I'll say a little bit later, in, in, in South Africa. So there becomes a, a, a questions about its quality. And we found, particularly in Tanzania uh, and Zambia, which were two models that we were working with, with with country teams there, that there were several issues revealed. There's issues of missing income data, but also issues of implausibly high and implausibly low or zero uh, income values. So the challenge, um, early versions of TASMOD apparently simulated far too much direct tax, whilst MicroZAML simulated far too little compared to external administrative data sources. Now this could be, um, Ha have three reasons, actually. It could be uh, two of them c c could relate to the validation data in the sense that um, tax data is often reported on a cash flow basis, not on an accrual basis. So um, it's interesting to the revenue service to know how much tax is collected in a given year, not how much um, was due to be paid in that year, which would be an accrual basis. So what, what, what I mean by cash flow, it's, it, it could represent self-employed taxation from the previous year. It could represent arrears of direct taxes um, and, and so forth. PAYE is generally on an accrual basis because it's paid as it's earned. But the model models taxation on um, an accrual basis, i.e. it's how much uh, uh, tax is due in that particular year. So that might be the problem. It might also be a problem of compliance. Um, we know, for example, by talking to revenue authorities in various countries, um, that the informal sector, whilst um, through legislation may, may uh, be due to pay tax, often doesn't, and there are difficulties in collection. So there's a compliance issue. And then finally, there's the quality of income data in surveys. And clearly, it's on that um, that I'll be focusing this afternoon. And in particular, the income variable uh, of interest is um, income from earned employment. Um, and we've selected that for two reasons. First of all, in Tanzania, for example, it's the main contributor to the over-simulation of direct taxes. If you look at uh, uh, um, uh, um, the uh, uh, Tanzanian data, um, 
bef and, and look at the contributions of the various income sources, self-employment income, uh, earned income, income from agriculture, or income from other sources, it's in employment income that's, uh, uh, that, that's creating the main problem. And I think more practically, um, what I'll be talking about is income imputation, and most income, income imputation methods uh, rely on, uh, on the, being able to s select uh, good covariates that will predict income. Um, we've had much more difficulty in uh, finding covariates within the data set for um, uh, self-employed income and income from agriculture. Um, so I'm using uh, 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 um, here some Euromod technology. Um, so YEM is the, is the variable of interest, which is the a, a variable which represents employed income. Um, and prior to uh, um, the uh, imputation process, we revisited the data preparation uh, uh, um, stages um, uh, prior to the uh, uh, um, uh, imputation uh, process. We've heard from um, Javier uh, and, and Gemma as well that model building is an iterative process. Well, so is data preparation. I think you often prepare the underpinning data set for the model, um, you prepare the model and you get feedback from the model which causes you to revisit the data. And this is an iterative process and that iterative process can go on for years. So I think um, it's um, important to, 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 to realize this. M models and the underpinning data both get better um, as they grow up. Um, yeah, okay. Um, implausible incomes, I think identifying missing incomes is relatively straightforward. Um, um, in most countries, you, you person says they're employed, but their employment income uh, is recorded as missing. However, it, it can be more difficult than that. So, for example, in Tanzania, uh, the, the survey question asks, what was uh, the uh, cash that you received um, last from your job? Um, and then there's a follow-up question, and what period did this cover? And the options are hour, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or other. Um, now, clearly that, um, uh, if, if, if the periodicity is missing, then clearly you need to set the um, income to missing too. Um, manual checks in Tanzania, and I'll focus on Tanzania, as I said, um, showed that most of the implausibly high incomes turned out to be due to uh, coding um, error. So what, what happened was that um, uh, the probably the 100 highest incomes, um, something like 70%, um, uh, the reportage was that they were being paid hourly. And clearly when you're actually computing a monthly income from an hourly income and you're multiplying um, uh, by 40 to get weekly and by 52 to get annual and divide by 12 to get monthly, you're actually multiplying an error there if the error is uh, 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 um, in, in that way. So the, these were the kinds of... Uh, uh, um, uh, implausibles that were identified uh, 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 by manual examination of the data. So using the raw untransformed uh, primary pay values, outliers were identified as values that were one and a half times the interquartile range from either the upper or lower uh, quartile. And we use that because that's, um, uh, that, 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 that's how the outliers are uh, often designated in box plots. But also, when we actually checked against our uh, observations, that's where we found the outliers to be. So we clearly were able to set those uh, outliers as missing in addition to the missings that were otherwise identified. Um, and we did those outlier identifications both by uh, occupational class and by uh, highest, educational, uh, high, highest educational status attained, both of which were very good predictors of income. Um, okay. Um, sorry, that's just 
in, in, in Tanzania, approximately 10% of the um, em employment income was actually um, uh, either missing or set to missing as implausible. There, ought to, there, there, there was also a need to do some further cleaning of covariates. We wanted to get the covariates as, uh, as, as clean as we could. Um, and that was fairly straightforward and easy for things like gender, age, etc. cetera. Um, it wasn't so easy um, uh, for uh, occupational class. I'm going to move forward. We tested four imputation methods, simple linear prediction, and three multiple imputation methods, predictive mean matching, two variants of sequential regression multiple imputation, which is sometimes referred to as multiple imputation using chained equations, or MICE. Um, and the two variants of SRMI that we used was SRMI regress and SRMI PMM, which is a predictive mean matching variant of SRMI. OK. As I said, the uh, imputation methods are, 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 are clearly regression-based methods um, for prediction, simple linear prediction and standard PMM. This is an OLS regression model. It's the main variable of interest is a continuous, i.e. primary pay. For the two SRMI uh, models, these are predicated on sequential regression models. So in, in our particular case, due to the patterns of missing that we had. It was a combination of OLS and multinomial logic models. Um, OK, and each, um, the, 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 the essence of multiple imputation is that you produce multiple data sets, one for each imputation. Um, we, for our uh, uh, um, purposes, used 50 imputations, um, and for the SRMI approaches, 100 iterations for each of those 50 imputations, which gives us lots of challenges. Uh, what did we find in Tanzania? Let's look at a kernel density plot. This is the plot of the observed um, uh, 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 um, cases. This is a, uh, it's pay in US dollars, actually, just for uh, uh, um, consistency. We were looking at comparisons between two countries. Um, and that's the observed. This is what you get with a simple linear prediction. This is the mean, by the way, of the 50, uh, sorry, not for the simple linear, because there's only one imputation here. But for, for, for the multiple imputations, uh, this is a mean of 50. So we've got the simple linear, then the PMM, and then the SRMI regress. And then the SRMI PMM, which you'll see is really the yellow, that's more or less where the, the, uh, the non-SRMI uh, um, uh, version of PMM goes. Now, that's all very well looking at these uh, uh, kernel density plots. But what does it mean in, in, in the real world? Well, if we move on to the results for Tanzania, um, this is looking just at direct taxes and simulation of direct taxes. Before any adjustment, um, we were simulating 493.2% of the administrative data reported direct taxes in a year. Um, we, we did some, um, uh, uh, before we did any multiple imputations, we did some constraining of the various income variables to the 99th percentile, including constraining um, the earned income um, to the 99th percentile by the different occupational classes. And that brought us down to simulating um, simply 167.1% um, of, of, of uh, uh, um, reported uh, um, uh, uh, direct taxes. But here are what you get as a result of the, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the four methods of, of, of imputation. And you can see they're all pretty similar. I suppose the standout, really, if you're going to call it a standout, is the SRMI regress, which is, uh, gives us slightly higher. But I, th I think that uh, th there's not much to choose between them. Um, we wanted also to test this approach in South Africa because with South Africa, um, we've got um, a data set which is actually um, the, the National Income Dynamics Study, which has actually been the, the income data has been tested by a, a, a lot of different uh, um, researchers, 
and uh, in, indeed the whole survey is conducted by the University of Cape Town, the Saldrew uh, unit there, and, and um, it's thought to be of, of pretty good uh, value, uh, of pretty good quality, and so it becomes a, a, an interesting case to test. Um, and we have found it to perform well when looking at direct taxation in South Africa using SA mod. So how do we do it? We created artificial missing um, uh, categories. Um, we did that by uh, setting a random number against every observation and dividing the um, uh, 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 um, observations into 10 deciles based on their um, uh, based on uh, the, 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 the random number, um, and then created 10 data sets um, imputed um, for each of those 10 data sets with a different decile being set to missing, and then added all the imputed data sets together at the end to create a completely synthetic data set of incomes that we could um, look alongside the actual incomes. Um, and when we did all that, I've summarized this already quickly, We've done all that, this is what the kernel density plot looks like, but this is what the scores on the doors look like. Um, this is the, uh, we use PMM, simple PMM, it was performing quite well uh, before and actually takes uh, five minutes to run as opposed to five hours to run um, in, on our machines. Um, and this is uh, an, uh, the percentage change. Um, the first column A uses the original employment income that was actually recorded um, in NIDS. And column B uses a totally imputed data set um, uh, uh, um, from, uh, uh, you know, on the NIDS cases. And C is the percentage change. And what you can see, I think, is quite good, is that if you look at direct taxes, um, you see that 80% of direct taxes are actually uh, captured by a totally imputed data set. But more importantly, because of preserving the distribution um, differences. If you look at the uh, benefits, um, then the, the, the benefits that were simulated using a completely imputed data set were very similar to when using the actual data set, which I think is quite persuasive. Um, I'm going to conclude now because I know that otherwise um, I'll be in trouble. But I think one of the things that we've skipped over is the fact that we've um, created these imputed data, and we've created the mean in which to test on the model. But actually, each imputation produces a, a data set which is equally as good as any other data set. And strictly, in order to be able to properly compute standard errors and confidence intervals around these estimates, we need to run the model uh, 50 times. Um, and that's part of the next phase of it. But obviously, one doesn't want to be at, and, and you can do that. You can call it from Stata and, and do that. And we will, we'll, we will be doing that. But, but one of the uh, problems and dilemmas of this whole approach is that, yes, it seems on the face of it to be a good thing to be uh, um, undertaking these income imputations. But how, in practice, can people use the model? If Remy, for example, um, in, in Zambia, wants to use a model, he doesn't really want to call it 50 times um, from Stata every time he wants to change uh, or test out a new policy. And it's a dilemma, because the literature is silent on what you can do with multiple imputations, um, uh, because they're not usually used in this way. OK, thank you very much. Thank you.